In this video, I'm going to go over how to detect a palindrome in C. So a palindrome is a string that is the same forwards as it is backwards. If you were to reverse the string, it would be the same as the original string. So if we had something like this, car string one is equal to not a palindrome, this is not a palindrome. If we, if we were to reverse this string, it's clearly not going to be the same as it is the original string. If I say car string two is equal to ABC CBA, this here is a palindrome because if you were to reverse the string, it would be identical to the original string. It's the same forwards as it is backwards, ABC CBA or ABC CBA. And this string here has an even number of characters in it. It's got six in it. You can have palindromes with an odd number of characters too. So if I said A, B, C, D, C, B, A, this is also a palindrome because it's the same forwards as it is backwards, A, B, C, D, C, B, A, or A, B, C, D, C, B, A. The difference here is that the character in the middle, that one is essentially sort of, we can think of it in our heads as not gonna change. It's gonna always be the middle character. If we were, if we were to re reverse the string, it, it would still be the middle character, right? And that character is just, you know, just by definition, the same as itself. Uh, so what we wanna do is write a program to detect whether a string is a palindrome or not. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna include the string library because this has useful functions like string length that allow us to find the length of a string. I'm also going to include stdbool.h. Now I like this because it allows us to create bool types. So we can say things like, you know, bool is palindrome, for example, is equal to true. And what we can do is we can use true and false and we can use bool as a type. And I just like it because I feel like if I'm going to be returning true and false from a function, I want to use true, true and false as a type. So as opposed to using something like ints or something like that. So let's make a function that's going to detect whether a string is a bool or not. And we'll put the function declaration up here. We're going to say bool is palindrome. And we're going to say car string. So we'll accept a string as a parameter here. And then we'll put the function definition down here. And the way our algorithm is going to work is we're going to compare the first character in the string to the last character in the string to see if they match. We're going to compare the second character in the string to the second last character in the string to see if they match. We're going to compare the third character in the string to the third last character in the string and on and on until we detect a character where we don't have a match, where like the, the, the corresponding character on the left hand side of the string does not dodge does not match with the corresponding character on the right hand side of the string if we ever have that then we've detected that we don't have a palindrome if we reach the middle of the string like if we reach here the middle of the string or we reach here the middle of the string and we have not detected a character that doesn't match with its corresponding character then at that point we know it's a palindrome because all the characters that that should match for it to be a palindrome have matched this isn't the only way we could detect a palindrome, but it is one of the more efficient ways. The other thing we could do is we could technically like reverse the string. We could So we could reverse the string and see character by character if it matches the original string. But that would involve, you know, technically speaking, uh, more work than what we're proposing here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say that we're going to loop through the string until we reach the middle of the string. And we're going to find the middle of the string using string length. And string length is the function that comes with string.h. So we're going to say here int middle is equal to string length of the string divided by 2. And that's going to give us the middle of the string. So the way that, you know, integer division works in C is if I've got something like 6 where it's an even number, then it's, it's kind of straightforward because 6 divided by 2 is going to be 3. And that's what we'd want because we'd want to go, we'd want to loop up until we reach three because like we'd want to compare, you know, this character to that character, this character to that character, this character to that character. But once we've reached position three, and if we're at position here, this, this is your position zero, one, two, three. Once we're at position three, that's when we're done. That's when we want to stop looking because we've, we've, we've checked all the characters, right? Um, so it's going to be straightforward in this case to, to identify the middle of the string. We just take the length of the string, divide it by two, and that's going to give us the middle of the string. In the case of a odd numbered number of characters in the string like this, where we've got like seven characters in the string, the way it works is if we did seven divided by two, C rounds down to towards zero. And so seven divided by two with an integer would actually give us three back. 
And that's okay. That's what we want too, because we don't actually need to do anything with D. We don't need to check anything because with that middle character, it, it, it is equal to itself by definition. There's nothing to check there. Um, it doesn't even move in the reversed string. So there's nothing to check there. So we can actually just go up to that position again. And so long as we've checked the corresponding characters against one another to see if they're equal, we're good at that point. So that's going to be the sort of where we're going to loop up until. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we'll make our loop here and we'll say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than middle, keep incrementing i. And what we can say is if ever the corresponding characters do not match, then at that point we know it's not a palindrome. And what we can do is just return false, just return false and just say like, okay, we know it's not a palindrome. So here I'm going to say if string at i doesn't equal string at i minus i minus one, if that's ever the case, return false. So what this is doing here is it's, it's, it's comparing the character we're examining currently on the left hand side to what I'm saying is the corresponding character on the right hand side. So we're going to take here, I'm, oh, sorry, this is, this is incorrect. That should be the, um, the, the string length of the string, um, minus I minus one. And so I, I forgot to do this here. I'm going to say here int length is equal to, and I'm going to say here, we'll just call it L E N and I'll say string length of the string. And I'll, I'll then do length minus I minus one. So I forgot to do that part there. So what this is, what this is doing here is it's comparing this character here to this character here, because the length of this string here is seven. So seven minus one gives us and minus I is zero. So seven minus zero minus one gives us six. That's going to give us that character there. Uh, when I is incremented to one, then we're going to be checking character B against seven minus one minus one, which would be character five, which would be that B there, right? And then when this, when the I is uh, two, we're going to be checking this character against seven minus two minus one, which would be four, which would be this character here. And so this is this this here, this indexing here of taking the length minus one because C is zero indexed and then minus I, that's going to ensure that we're always checking against the sort of the corresponding character on the right hand side. And then what I'm going to do is if we've gone through all the characters and we haven't found a character that doesn't match with its corresponding character, then at that point we know it's a palindrome. So we can just return true. So what we can do now is we can, we can test out this function here. So let's try it out. We'll say here, bool, or actually we don't even need to use bool. We can say if is palindrome string one, we'll do a printf. We'll say printf and we'll say string one. Uh, maybe we'll do this. We'll say percent s and then we'll do a new line and then we'll say is a palindrome. Now I'll, I'll just put like a dash here. And I'll just say is a palindrome. And I'm just going to output, you know, the results of testing this function. So I'm going to say here percent s slash n is not a palindrome. And what we're doing here is we're going to test the function here with with string one. So we're going to pass string was an string one as an argument. And then we're going to output the result of whether it's a palindrome or palindrome or not. And I'm going to output actually the string itself. Just that way I, I can kind of see the string itself too. So I'm going to say here string one is string one. So that way we output the, the string itself. And then we'll say on a new line is a palindrome or is not a palindrome, depending on whether this returns true, in which case we output this or false, in which case we output this. So we'll run this here. Error implicit is palindrome. Oh, did I, oh, I, I spelled it wrong. So I spelled it wrong. I just compiled it now. We'll run it now. And I get not a palindrome is not a palindrome. And that makes sense because not a palindrome is not a palindrome. So I'm just going to kind of put that on a new line there just to make it clear. But we're on this here and we, we check the string, not a palindrome. We determine that it is not a palindrome. 
And I'm just gonna actually just take this logic here and just apply it to string two and string three, just to see if those are palindromes. And those should be palindromes. So we'll say here string two, string two, and we'll say string two, and then we'll check string three. And we're just checking that the function is working, checking to see it's detecting whether these things are palindromes or not. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just throw in an extra printf here just to put things on a new, new line in between each check of each string here. Okay, so let's compile this now, run this, and we get that, you know, this is not a palindrome, but that ABC CBA is a palindrome and ABCD CBA is a palindrome as well. And so now what we've got here is a, is a function we can use anywhere to check whether a string is a palindrome or not. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.